Why, why are we in this in this in this thing why 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 is the hour like this <laughs> why, why is summertime even a thing yeah <laughs> <laughs> they're actually talking about it um they they're thinking about yeah um uh, uh, not doing it anymore so yeah kind of like stopping yeah. this summertime stuff right it's even it's even doing something with curfew and whatever but that's that's for our news flash what we're going to discuss yes um let's just get our special guest here uh do you know anything about african arts um not much no. to the let's say technicalities and details of it no just what we what we have been reading from uh from our, our, from our news flash right? and yeah just independent research pretty much but yeah. other than that not so much I know there's money in it. <laughs> it can be, but yeah. it takes a lot of time. Right. I know. Um, I do know that it's 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 a world, it's an industry that if you don't know it, you just don't know it. You probably mm -hmm. don't value it. Yep. But but art, I mean, the whole thing behind me is even art. Yeah. Is it an art? You right. know what I mean? It's this invincible uh, strength that we sometimes just don't seem to think is relevant. Exactly. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. And here, um, you know, here in, in the West where we are, you have, of course, uh, a lot of investment that revolves around art. And, mm -hmm. and uh, it would be nice to also see that, um, uh, you know, portrayed in, in Ghana. African and, you know, art. All of, yeah, African yeah. art. And um, so with that said, I promised to get somebody on that, you know, could uh, give us an idea of what african art is like and of course he's an artisan as i would call uh, call that and um just help us to explore this whole world because we don't know a thing nope <laughs> <laughs> are we open to learn um yes yep. absolutely i'm definitely open to learn um i really um also want to to know more about what is to know yeah <laughs> All right, so here with me on the show, who I have is a, a very special guest, uh, Ghanaian, and based in uh, London Town. He is an artisan, and he's also the founder of Adom Squared, which is a collective and gallery aimed to promote uh, artisans, specifically black artisans. Mm -hmm. And I would really like to know why this thing is so important, and why Africans, and of course his journey, yeah. um, um, exploring this uh, world that is quite fresh and young. He's making major moves i do believe and i saw some one of the moves that he did was one with converse you know all of these prominent uh youth culture brands and uh, things like that mm -hmm. and you know what let's let's get him on to talk to him about all that is uh revolving around uh, african art let me just see if he's there he's definitely in the background studio let's uh let's give a virtual applause for uh yeah, <laughs> <virtual> <laughs> <applause>. <laughs> Adam. i think that's uh um that's really what we need right now yes, yes, yes all right yes, yes. let's get him on oh yeah i can see him wonderful hello Kwesi, how are you yes yes we can definitely hear you Definitely. How have you been? Right. Good, good. You seem really laid back. Like this, uh, I mean, the way you even look, man, it's... <laughs> right. Right. Right, right. You can definitely see that you are in that calm space and nobody can come between you and that calm space that's really that's really good so this is uh this is pretty cool because uh this is our first setting that we are back home uh mm -hmm. or let's say back in the studio <laughs> he said back home <laughs> back home in the studio that's all right we're back home in, in the, the studio, studio yeah. let's just put it that way <laughs> and uh, uh and it's super cool to just be interacting with somebody who's based in london town uh, so definitely a warm welcome to you. Uh, shout out to Slim who is running things uh, at the back end. If you could put his volume here on the studio on a bit louder so that we could uh, properly hear him, that would be great. Right. Um, Kwesi, how was your Sunday like? Did you do anything with art? Getting back into art in the coming weeks, um, coming months as well. Yeah. But for today, it's just been a chill day, just 
relaxing, you know, yeah. watching Netflix and yeah, nothing much really. <laughs> what you watching on Netflix? What, what, what you Netflix? Exactly, what you watching on Netflix? Could you share with us? Actually, not not Netflix. Actually, what, um, was it um BBC um iPlayer? That was um, Snowfall. Yeah, and I just finished that. Oh yeah. So, what was that? Yeah. Snowfall. Is that a movie or a series? It's definitely it's a series. series. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Amazing series. Yeah. I I, I have yet to to oh. explore that one. Um, I I was into um the shy. So somebody said, okay, if you're into the shy, then you're definitely going to love uh, Snowfall. So I'm gonna explore that. And um, I'm, not, I'm not head of the shy actually, but I'll I'll check it out. Right. Is it's, it that, similar to Snowfall? Yeah. Right. Right. Is it that kind of raw series? A a bit of. Uh, not entirely crime, but really like based on true stories and, and all of that. Um, well, it was based on the uh, like the drug pandemic in, in Los Angeles mm. at that time. So right. everything to everything revolving around it, and basically the uh, main character just building, a, I'll say, an empire surrounding you know the whole drug um, pandemic. In, yeah. Yeah, LA. So. Okay, that was in the eighties. In the eighties, was it? I'm not sure. I think so. 80s. I think yeah, yeah, it was in the eighties. Right. But, okay. Yeah. Be- because yeah. of you, we're, we're going to check that out. Hopefully. Snowfall, right? Oh, yeah, snowfall. Definitely. You should. You should. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good. It's good to have you here. Um, I mean, the reason why you're here is definitely because um, I stumbled upon you on on Instagram. Uh, basically, <laughs> and um, it was it was a good stumble upon um, mm. because. Yeah. For for us, it was it was we had so many questions relating to art, black art, African art, and um, for us, it was just we couldn't wait to have somebody on that could uh, you know give us a a better idea of the relevance of black art, and specifically yeah. uh, that uh, that of Ghana. That is uh, that is really why. So it's a pleasure to uh, again have you uh, have you here. Um, where are you in this place of life? I mean, how has the lockdown been treating you in terms of uh, your creativity and things like that? Um, so, as I said, I've taken a break from um, basically painting. Mm-hmm. But um, from the start of lockdown, since in London, we've been in lockdown for like 20 years now. <laughs> we, um, I, I was doing my master's back then. Right. So, um, I did not really have a lot of um, work to do. I had a lot of time on my hands, so I decided to like fully dedicate my time to um, art and sort of being like almost a full time artist. So, during that period, I would say it was really good for me. So, the period, the period from about um, June to maybe the end of 2020 was really good for me because I dedicated all my um, time to painting and I saw the results from it just from that six month period as well. And um, from, well, basically, start of 2021, um, I also have in other interests as well. So, one of my interests was finance. Mm-hmm. And I was lucky enough to get a job in finance as well. So, I've been focused on that right. a lot more as it's um, currently more demanding. Yeah. So, um, kind of like the busy period kind of died down as well. So, now, it's, um, as I said, going back to, you know, spending the little time that I have um, left to, push everything into art and you know see what comes out of it as well yeah mm-hmm. got it got it very important finance yeah. Don, donnie's a finance guy i'm a finance guy oh, really? that's true yep an economist oh, okay okay economics has always been hard to me so i just try to avoid <laughs> <laughs> avoid that field yeah i'm just more accounting you know yeah yeah i like that i like the mixing t- uh, two worlds because you mean uh, I know the the art the art artistic life can be sometimes dreadful in terms of that moment you finally make money. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. is, is that true? Um, I mean, sorry, could you could you clarify what exactly you mean? As in, uh, the moment you make the income to live off of it yeah. takes longer than probably any other creative. Yeah. Um. Well, that, that is true because um, unlike most markets that are out there, so for instance, if I'm to compare to the um, financial market or the fashion industry or the tech industry, mm-hmm. people know what they want in um, those industries and it's pretty much objective. As um, compared to art where people are looking, um, people have to stumble up um, upon what they find interesting to be able to endorse it and then you know keep on patronizing it. 
So um, for the art markets, you have to really um, find a target audience that is suited for you and that is ready to not only um, patronize your work once, but to continuously um, keep on coming. And that is um, kind of like the burden on artists. Right. So, um, I mean, I have I have a completely different take on that because um, the relationship between actually um, gaining an income through your art and um, actually being an artist, that to me, being free to express yourself and um, kind of, you know, contrast each other. So um, I'm more of, um, I think my perspective has made it easier on me because I don't, I'm trying not to see um, my artistic journey as a career a career generally I'm trying to you know seriously build an income from but rather um, as a journey to freely express myself and mm -hmm. wait for the right people to come so if I am blessed enough to get people who keep on patronizing me like collectors and um, basically art fans then I can build a career out of that because um, I've tried both ways um, I think pretty much last year and the way that paved the way um, mm -hmm the way most for me or made me grow was the part of just doing what you want, doing it freely, but also not relying on it financially so that you can, you will not be affected by their sure. current trends and everything, but just do so to you. So, yeah. 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 I like that. I, I think that is really important because it's being financially stressed or strained, mm. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it, it puts a strain on the creativity and, and yeah. at some yeah. point you stop being creative as you are and start to do all kinds of things just to, you know, exactly. make ends meet. And I've been there as well. It's, it's quite, it's quite damaging for, um, I would say the artists because yeah. there are lots of trends and trends that's coming and go out. So if you're basing your art on just that. You're just going to be in a space where you just keep on changing anything, and you're not going to be, yeah. um, you know, honing in on one um, particular style. You could have, you know, progressed in and become great at. So it's just, you know, a lot of changes and nothing really stable for you to build an audience upon, even. So yeah. it's just, yeah. I know. I know. Mm -hmm. Could could you could you tell could you kind of I know we're we're a bit of a student here, but could you ex yeah. tell us and explain to us what what is art? Yeah, what exactly? what is considered? Considered, yeah. So I think art. I think this question is the question artists dread the most because <laughs> that there's there's never a definition for art. But to me, I'll say art is freedom, and art is the ability to express. Because um, at the end of the day, um, as human beings, we we are able to probably say how we feel so display how we feel so if i'm angry i'll just probably cast you out or i'll just um show that i'm angry through my facial expression ex expressions or whatever but for an artist and um, i mean artists in different forms so if i'm going to take music for instance which is the art form that a majority of people relate to right. um musicians have the ability to use their lyrics and their beats and their music basically to be able to um, express how they feel mm -hmm. and relating that to art especially visual artists um, we have the ability to um, display how we are feeling or display visually a message that we want to put out there for people to relate to so to me art is basically the power to express whatever you're feeling freely and for people to communicate a message or to express how you're feeling about something in a certain point in time yeah i like that good explanation <laughs> so could, could you take us to your your journey in art uh where did it start and uh, t t give us a bit of a um a throwback on yeah, that um well i've been an artist pretty much my whole life so um at the earliest time i can remember drawing was i think was homework and um were supposed to draw that that was and when i was about six years old or something we were supposed to draw a human being and i, I had no idea because at six years old I, I didn't even know i could barely make out what what the hand was like i was just freestanding at that point so i was just wondering what could i put together to actually visually depict a human being on paper so obviously i went to my parents to try and help me out and funny enough that day i think we learned about shapes so um basic shapes, triangles, circle, rectangle, square, and everything. And, and they were basically like, you know, before you did it, you were drawing your shapes. So put the shapes together and make a human being. 
So at that point, it was quite interesting to me how I could put things together to, you know, create another form or another structure. And I did it. Obviously, it was horrible. I think I, ha- I have the picture somewhere, but looking back, it, it, it was horrible. <laughs> it was really bad. But again, it showed um, what I was trying to do. So from there, I was always trying to depict things um, visually mm-hmm. or put things together to be able to form a structure. And I'll say it really picked up um, in throughout primary school. I was always drawing or always, you know, sketching somewhere instead of listening in class or something. And um, teachers realized that, so they used, um, I think the good thing is that they used my ability to be able to, um, you know, do other things. For example, drawing the diagrams for exam papers, um, drawing or designing posters or whatever, or drawing pieces of posters for events or something. So I picked up from then in high school was my turning point where I did um, the IGCAC and the IB. So um, with the IGCAC, I got my actual um like step into art and education to art to see what this whole art world is about um how i can fully fully like qualify my understanding in art and it was good because at that point we were taught how to seriously draw talk about the different forms of media and everything although we're not allowed to f- um, fully um use any kind of thing because again we're being examined so there were, there were requirements for um what we're supposed to do so it was mostly pencil and everything but again i'm grateful for that because once you are good in pencil mm-hmm. your your boundaries your boundaries are limitless so um after that i did the ib so that was um probably the most stressful course i've ever done in my life was this uh, in ghana yeah what was this was this in ghana or in the uk yeah this was in ghana i basically okay. grew in, um, grew up in ghana my whole life basically lived there okay um right i just moved to the uk for university and I progressed from there oh, so nice. my home is ghana basically i'm right. just you know freestyling here okay <laughs> but um in the ib period that was when i did art at a higher level so you could choose to do it, do it at a standard level or a higher level mm-hmm. and with a higher level you are basically goes really in because you're not just learning how to draw or how to paint but you're learning the background behind you know a painting so if you see a painting of mine what is the literature behind it mm-hmm. what is the history behind it why did you choose this material instead of this material mm-hmm. and although it was really good it was really a burden because at that point i just chose us to avoid other subjects so mm-hmm. instead of doing maybe biology or something i wanted to do art so that i don't see as learning and still get the same credits for um, to be able to progress into university so it was kind of like a leisure subject for me but again i chose it to be able to express myself to be able to paint to be able to relieve myself from stress but yeah. the learning aspects was there heavily so i don't know i don't know who i was fooling but at that, at that point i just ended up learning about art mm-hmm. and the history behind art and for that point at that point to really push me into actually analyzing my pieces and putting meaning behind my work was for for each art piece, you basically had to research three artists who, ins- who were um, inspiring your work. So you could you went from having an idea, then finding three artists that had a similar style or uh, inspired your idea, mm-hmm. and bring together all the objects and everything that inspired um, what you were thinking about. And then finally, I mean, all throughout this process, you're documenting everything, and then you finally create the art piece and you know write about why why you chose to use acrylic paint instead of oil paint. Why you chose to use this color? Why you chose to use a woman? Why you chose to use um, some certain symbols in your work or whatever? Explain it in like an essay. So I think that those, those were the longest essays I wrote, and in total, I think my final essays were, were like fifteen thousand words or whatever. And after today, through university and everything, I, I've not done a work that is that long. So, so, so did you enjoy it? Did you enjoy doing it on the on a higher level, or did you wish? You actually went um, for the uh, for the lower or the regular level of art. Oh no! Actually, I um, I'm happy I went for it at a higher level because, as I said, I wouldn't have wanted to do anything at a higher level. Okay. And looking at it um, practically, I wasn't ready to even study anything at a higher level. <laughs> However, look, <laughs> looking at it from an um, art point of view, you're it low was key funny. Pardon? You're low key funny. Oh, <laughs> so um, I 
looked at it and in a way like looking at it from the art point of view i just wanted to express myself and be free on the canvas however i had to go through all the steps of documenting my work and learning the history behind um, a certain artist and why he has inspired my work so that part was a burden and the fact that i had to play my art according to the standards of the ib as well was a burden as well but again it puts you at a certain skill level that is I think if you have that background, really nothing can shake you off. Mm -hmm. So I went from there and started university um, where I was doing accounting. And I chose not to stay at because parental pressure, number one, of course. And um, the fact that even without the parental pressure, I didn't want to study as because of my um, history and was studying at um, high school. And it was just... Um, a case of I didn't want to do art for three years in university just to get a degree in art and you know like one next so I chose to do finance as well because I was okay. interested in finance and business and everything I right. did my degree in finance and I was painting you know once in a while and that's when I also created my um, gallery as well yeah. because of my whole struggle with art and everything in Ghana because I tried to be I tried to experiment how to be like um pursuing a career in art to see whether I actually want to take it seriously. And with my little effort, looking back, I didn't really do much. But at that time, it seemed like I was doing everything possible. And even with that, there were so many problems I faced. So I was just thinking, imagine if I fully stepped into it, mm -hmm. what problems could I have faced? And I've, I've been made aware of these kind of problems. That's why I created the gallery and the um, community to be able to help artists with these problems and you know push them out of um, yeah. their whole of you know not being able to make it as an artist yeah so i think since then it's just been painted in and out and the pandemic really changed everything like if i can confidently say that if everything went just as um, it did in the pandemic i'll probably you know be pursuing art full time and everything but you know other interest and in, yeah reality so 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 really why painting because could have done drawings or probably um i don't know do yeah, other that, forms of question. drawings but why painting mm, i'll say painting was one of the art forms that i did in, in high school God, that seems so I hard though painting is it seem, painting seems so difficult sophisticated i mean it's mm. it's hard yeah to an extent but at the same time i mean there are, there are a lot more art forms that are way more difficult nah. for example i'm i'm not i'm not even shy to say my weaknesses but using oil paint up Ooh. to today i've i have a pack of oil paint with, which i tried to use mm -hmm. up to today i don't know how to work it out <laughs> honestly and i tried it once and it wasn't drying up so i was used to acrylic and with acrylic you basically paint and it dries up within it could dry up within like five minutes. Okay. And with oil, an hour came by, it wasn't drying up. I was like, you know, forget it. So um, it just depends on what you decide to pick up. But I chose painting again because I specialized in it in high school. Okay. And because um, I like colors really. So drawing drawing doesn't give you the ability to express colors. That's if you're doing a mono, um, monogram drawing. That is what most drawings are. But again, I don't limit myself. So. Um, the most the main media i use is acrylic and watercolor watercolor i don't use that much probably on my own which i don't show to people okay or um trying to get into the good thing about um high school as well was that we were forced to learn how to do art in different art forms yeah. so again that's why i'm forever grateful for the course because i had to study photography i had to study sculpting so working with clay and everything I had to do wire work so that was basically using a wire mesh to create a figure that was the hardest thing ever but if i could go back to do it mm -hmm. i honestly really just jump at it so i'm really open to all ideas yeah and with the way i see my eyes going as well um painting is just like the stepping stone because there's a lot more ways to express yourself visually that just doesn't stick to the canvas after all we are visual artists so with anything you can see even if it's a building you know it's a way to express myself so painting is just the start yeah but I'm, i see myself growing into various you know and forms of making art okay did you as well get like the history behind um the arts 
so like with the different types of arts that you were uh, you got um, in high school did you get like a history where it was from like which culture it originated and all of that um not really because at the end of the day you um the little freedom that the course gave you was the fact that you were you had the power to choose what kind of artist you wanted to be okay so the only history you had to really learn was not necessarily about the arts itself but the history behind the artists that were inspiring your work and what they were influenced by why they chose to do their works in a certain way and why is them influencing your work apart from that there wasn't any lesson that actually taught us that you know maybe this kind of art came from the you know roman you know age or whatever no there was none of that so yeah I see right you're really giving us a, a good a good view of uh, what art is really even donnie i was even gonna ask him like how do you know oil painting and stuff <laughs> <laughs> got me thinking like we we didn't know anything about art um for those of you who just tuned in welcome to africa on focus here is where we share our success stories we are back in the studio and uh finally we can uh, make all the interviews with our international or let's say global africans happen mm -hmm. and uh we are talking to our very special guest who goes by the name of uh, uh i almost said kwesi adom uh, but w which is his name <laughs> founder of adom squared a collective uh, and gallery aimed to promote uh i call it artisans we, I'm, I'm i'm gonna check with him in a bit if that is the right word even for it um, but we are exploring the world of African artists and why this industry seems to be so much undervalued. Um, and what is the value that we end up uh, missing? We are talking uh, about that with him. If you just tuned in on Facebook, welcome, welcome. Uh, don't leave the page, leave that video screen on. And uh, feel free to share it around because the conversations that happen here are very relevant, especially to uh, uh, Africans all around the world. If you tuned in via YouTube, uh, don't forget to subscribe, comment. If you have a question, I am going to make sure that I uh, find that and ask, uh, ask our special guest uh, your questions. In the meantime, I also want to give a shout out to Gary, who says, glad to see you back at the studio. Just like you, I'm finally back. <laughs> <laughs> also, a shout out to Cyril Ajako, who says, hello, I'm watching from Suriname. Uh, shout out to you. Suriname, man, I never knew uh, our show uh, reaches that that way. But uh, definitely a shout out to you. Um, Kwesi, uh, I know that you, know, you, you, you gave us an idea of how your journey was. Uh, obviously, you're a freestyler there in uh in uk so we're we definitely see this is a temporary mode home mm -hmm. is ghana to you um mm -hmm. could you could you tell me first and foremost the word artisan is that is that correct to um uh, to call you an artisan or is that something that is totally not relevant to you um i'll be honest with you <laughs> i have no idea what that word means <laughs> i have i have an idea of what it could mean that is probably someone who um, invests or um, picks up the arts or work and works with the arts. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's the most I can think of. But yeah. don't hold me to it. So yeah. yeah, it seems that it is defined as a worker in skill trade, especially one that involves making things by hand. So um, hand woven textiles, painted uh, ceramics, ceramics. How, what's the word for it? Ceramics. Ceramic. Ceramic. <laughs> and leather goods. Oh. So what is that is that relevant? To you. To, to someone like you. Yeah, actually, because as I said, um visual art encompasses everything. Yeah. And as long as you can see it and as long as you are able to translate your spirits through yeah. whatever you're creating for another person to identify, you've achieved your goal. So um textiles, ceramics, leather work and, and everything yeah. is in probably in the 20, um, 21st century and in 2021 some of the most powerful forms of visual arts mm. and um, I, with this it's mostly in the fashion industry so um, even if you look at leather work we can look at most of the luxury um, bag um, brands that we have here so Louis Vuitton and Gucci or um ysl or hermes or whatever it's all leather mm -hmm. but um they make their statement through the way they're able to craft their work and through the time and the quality and the craftsmanship and um, obviously there's the hype and the you know branding behind this but that's 
all part of why they are artists in you know that aspect mm -hmm. so yeah it's it's really important to me and it's just another mode of expressing myself so once i'm able to again it's, it's more skilled um in terms of for example with leather work or with ceramics you have to actually learn you know break down the um what makes up you know maybe a ceramic pot or what you have to put together to make um, make a duffel bag or something mm -hmm. um so you have to you know gain the skills to be able to succeed succeed in creating something visually from that but i believe once i'm able to learn that again it's like just another way of expressing myself so it's as mm -hmm. important yeah nice. love that absolutely love that so could you tell us about your uh gallery because it's it's there for a reason it's there not just for yourself you know, it's, yeah. it's also there for other uh, artists. Could you tell us um, why your gallery is here and what seems to be, uh, I don't know if undervalued is the right word, but what seems to be missing for uh, African artists and black arts, art, black arts in general? Okay, um, so I created my gallery, as I said, because of the struggles I was having being a fake full-time artist. Um, but at that time, I think I really I created I created a series of works which obviously were not good because again I was young and I didn't have much exposure to a lot of things and this was this was um, right after high school but again my high school works were good but my um, the work I created after was not up to par mm -hmm. and I wanted people to patronize it so um, I was I was really lucky to find this person who was who was like you know what I'm going to share your work and you know speak to some people and they'll be able to put it in this hotel and that hotel so as a young artist who has you not know, put much effort into it i was thinking wait this must be easy mm -hmm. so you know to be able to have my work in some of the best hotels in ghana it was like wow like seriously that that is a big thing yeah. and the time came for you know me to actually speak to the guy and you know first call he doesn't pick up second call he doesn't pick up and he continues and okay we don't hear from this guy anymore and it's like okay what's actually happening and from then up to today never heard from him and so that that was just left hanging and then i visited the, the, this an art center in ghana which basically hundreds of artists uh it's like a marketplace right but where every artist has their store and i just went visited their walkthrough and you see so many artists that are like at that point i was seeing them like me so that are creating works but obviously they were creating better works than i was yeah so walking through the scene literally amazing pieces the work that you actually see in the hotels as opposed to what i thought i could be in a hotel and they are standing there for you know five Ghana cities and at that time five Ghana cities were was about a pound Mm -hmm. one pound i'm just thinking if you and how my works i was trying to value them up to about 300 Ghana cities so that was about <laughs> about 60 Why pounds are you laughing? <laughs> but i'm thinking wait it's either i got this wrong or something must be happening to you guys because that's a, this doesn't make sense right so i go from store to store and everybody is just like crazy works from ranging from a let's say a zero sizes to a four sizes like big yeah. small everything um pot you have clay works you have wire works like basically heaven for us but it wasn't a gallery it was a marketplace mm -hmm. and this place has been there for ages and people just come there to you know make sales for the day and go back home and it's repetitive basically a marketplace so i saw this and i was like wait for me to have gotten up to do my work my bad work looking back trust me it's bad and to value it at 300 Ghana cities for these people to be skilled and to be doing this much, this good work for mm -hmm. five Ghana cities. First of all, they are undervalued. Second of all, they don't have the exposure. And third of all, yeah, I don't think they themselves know the, um, the true value, the true value of what they are doing yeah. because boy, they, these were actually really good works. Mm -hmm. So I went back on at home and I was thinking, first of all, it's not fair. And second of all, I don't want to be the, the guy who promises them that their work is going to be in the hotel. Because again, um, I thought 
that works deserve to be in the hotel. So yeah. I went back and sat down, started thinking. And at that time, what was funny is that um, since I was young, I was always the guy who was like, you know, I don't want to go to school. Um, I don't see the point of learning, <laughs> you know, all these algebra and everything. When we're still going to use <laughs> addition and multiplication in the workplace. Right. So I was just like, you know what, I, I want to find a way to make. Back then, funny enough, it was money driven. So I was, I was like, I want to find a way to make money without actually working. So I, the idea of the gallery came about, and that's the age where social media was literally about to pick up. So um, I created the gallery, and I, my mindset behind that was that basically you post the work, promote the work, and um, you have to you get to a level where you gather a community, and for someone's work to be on your page, they have to pay you a certain amount. Okay. So I did it for free. obviously because I was starting. I did it for free for a long time. Yeah. So I was just posting, and I think that was like the best time I could, um, best thing I could have done anyway, because mm-hmm. right. doing the freely meant that was literally took passion to do it. So I kept putting in the passion and posting the works, and you know, doing everything from there. And um, it got to a point. Um, I'll say I was really lucky as well, really blessed because I created um, the gallery at the same time where they, I think Nigerian hyper realistic artists and uh, um, African artists in general were getting more recognition anyway yeah so um there was a period where there was a hashtag i don't know if you heard of it but we are nigerian creatives i I might have seen it come and pass yeah yeah so um that hashtag really blew up and it was by this one guy um who also basically did the same thing that i did but he he does it on twitter as well so he was smart enough to create a hashtag which literally blew and took artists from point A to wow. So um, again, I was working within that period and my job as a promoter was to be able to take the artist's work from their page, put it on my page and take it to a different audience. And because we're all growing with the boom of, you know, artists in Africa and everything, my page grew as well because I was basically posting the works that the artists were making. So again, it was just growing and up to today, I'm grateful for that because we, I still have the connections with those artists as well. And, you mm-hmm. know, as opposed to if I contacted them now, where they are big and it's like, you know, they are not going to reply to my DM or something, but we created that connection, we promoted the works, we kept on working together. And for them, it was it was amazing, an amazing period where they are getting recognized by people from all sorts of, all walks of life. Mm-hmm. And for my page as well, different opportunities are coming. So I was thinking, how can I diversify my community and gallery to be able to actually benefit the artists I'm working with more than promotion. So at that point, money was out of my mind because it was working without money. So there was no point. So um kept on push, putting it out there and it got to the point where people were now coming to um, get commissions done or to want to buy works or something. So yeah. when I got to that point, I was like, wait, wait, what's actually happening? And that is why up to today, I still stick with the motive of if you are going to do it for money, you might as well not do it because art, art is not like the correct markets to, you know, be motivated by money. Honestly, I've done it before. There was a point throughout my journey where I said, okay, I'm going to charge people for posting. I did it for about a week. I, I just said now nah, because I made money throughout that week, honestly. But the number of people who are actually ready to pay for you to promote their work were almost nothing. So mm-hmm. I just stopped. I was like, you know what? Let me just focus on helping artists. So, you know, different points in time, I was getting commission for artists um, where somebody in, let's say, the UK or let's say Germany or something will message our gallery and be like, okay, we want a portrait of this or that. You know, want to buy this work or, or we saw this work on your page. How can we get a print or something? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they tell me, I basically tell the artist in Nigeria, which was most of the time in Ghana. That, okay, this person is interested in your work. How are we going to work it out? At that point, I wasn't even taking a commission. The only um, percentage percentage I took was to was in the case of if I had to prepare the work. Yeah. So in terms of prints, where somebody wants a print of an artist's work, I have to go and you know buy the paper, go to the printing service, frame it up, and ship it. Yeah. I, I I took the uh, money out of that and just paid the artists from um, the rest. Right. So it was going really well, and um, again, I, 
got to a point where I was like, you know what, I've achieved what I wanted to achieve, but how can I scale it up more? Mm-hmm. And then life came into when, you know, the degree and working and everything. So it's just been at that level where, okay, I promote artists and if work comes through, I just give it to an artist. And I think, you know, it's been able to build up people's careers to a certain level where they're able to take it off from there as well. So yeah, I'm really grateful for that, it's- to be able to do that, yeah. You know, it sounds to me like the experience that you had um, at the marketplace, mm-hmm. you kind of like v- virtualized it. So yeah, you brought that yeah. to the internet. Yeah, and the main reason behind that was also uh, um, considering the fact that I was young. Right. Um, I had no um, resources to be able to, you know, create something, you know, in person. And even though... Um, Fortunately, my parents are always there to help me, ready to help me. You know, if I want to do something, they are ready to fund it, fund it as well. But it wasn't. I wasn't even in the position to be able to say, "Okay, mom, dad, I want like you know ten thousand dollars to start a gallery or something." <laughs> it was a case of I know I'm not going to be able to build a gallery, and I'm also you know going to university trying to get a degree and everything. Yeah. So what can I do at this point in life for the meantime? to create a platform and still help as many people as I can so that when I actually have my own resources and have the ability to, you know, utilize my resources, yeah. then we go big. So that's why so far is um, on the internet, but soon it's going to start branching out because again, the ability to, you know, create my own, you know, part for the artists as well as coming alive. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. I was wondering, there's one question that's really like a, a good one that's pending here. So, um, what are the elements that give an artifact its worth? Because uh, I like that story that you shared. Okay, you, there were there were creations where you could get like 300 CDs for, and you had others just, you know, taking other money just to survive. Yeah. So, how, how does that even work? Because it's quite, just like you said, it's subjective. You know, yeah. it's, it's almost based on a taste. Pretty much, yeah. and and also opportunity because yeah. one you have the virtual gallery that you can promote, yeah. and therefore you can attract the um, external investors or buyers overseas who probably will pay in dollars. Meanwhile, someone who probably has better quality of art is stuck in yeah. choco and <laughs> yeah. uh, and and have to sell that for 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 three cities. So. Yeah. What other elements kind of like give an art um, or an artifact its worth? Mm-hmm. Um, I think first of all, it starts with the artist. So as the artist, that's why I always say, um, and even in general, like to get on my page, for instance, or to get into my gallery or to be featured, your work has to be good. And that's, mm-hmm. that's like the bottom line. And because of the subjective nature of art, a lot of people, you know, have a difficulty in class and what is good and what is bad. But I think it's very clear to most of us when you see a good art piece or you see a bad one. So, um, first of all, your work has to be good. And I'm able to say, say this because I've been there. I've been at a stage where my work has been bad, like seriously bad. And I'm still putting it out there and I'm wondering why isn't this person patronizing my work? I've been at stages where my work has been, I don't even, what do you even say my work has been excellent? But it has been way better, and then people, more people are patronizing it. So um, the first step, I think, is for your work to be good. Develop your skill set, develop um, your craftsmanship, and put the work together um, before you put it out there. Mm-hmm. And after that, you have, you have to believe in your your craft. Honestly, you, you have to believe in your source because no no one in the art market is going to believe for you. If anything, the art market is really like harsh on all these things because no one is going to come come up to them and say you know you, your work is good yeah. and again I've, I've i've experienced a lot to, like throughout my journey so with for instance with the way i paint there are some works where um i can intentionally let's say um make a figure disproportionate yeah. and to somebody it's like bro why couldn't you just draw the person the right way so I've had works where, you know, maybe the face is bigger than the body or whatever. And I'm like, that's how I want to do it. But until you defend yourself and say, that's how I actually want to do it, people are just going to criticize the work and say, that's not how a human being looks. Right. So <laughs> stand behind the work, believe in your source and just 
you know, take it from then say that, okay, if I wanted to draw, for example, um, well, throughout my art career, I'm sure it's, it's evident in my works, um, I've studied women. Why? Because simply they are more interesting, they have more features than men, and men are just like a piece of wood. So I chose to do women because they just show more and they show it in a better way. Yeah. So, if I, pardon? I said yes. <laughs> oh, okay. You yeah, so um, <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm drawing a woman, and there was a point in my life where I was doing um, nude figure studies to be able to actually learn how to draw a human being. So for someone like me, I, it's like I know how to draw a human being. I've learned how to draw a human being academically as well. So if I choose to draw a woman and maybe her right boob is significantly <laughs> bigger than her left boob, I don't need you to tell me that, you know, my work is not good. And to you, it may not be good, but at the same time, I'm creating my work for whoever wants to relate to it. And that's the beauty about the subjectivity with art, is that, you know, it's open to anyone to actually, you know, speak to and to relate to. So that is me believing in, believing in the fact that my work is good and that there's something I want to push out there. And if you don't get it, you don't get it. If you do, you do. Yeah. Another thing is... Um, grabbing the right opportunities that come your way. Because again, art is a market. And like any marketplace that operates, you have to make use of your network, you have to make use of any opportunity that comes. And you have to be humble as well. Because at the end of the day, no one is going to patronize your work if you think you're the biggest and the, you know, the best in the whole field. And although I just said, have confidence in work. Yeah, have confidence in work, but don't, don't you know, be cocky about it. Because again, until well, forever, we are always learning and we are always in the mode of learning and trying to better ourselves. So if you're in a situation, be the most humble person in the room just to learn from the experience. You know, take all the criticisms and everything just to learn from the experience. Yeah. And then um, take it back to your studio and see how you can, you know, make yourself better as an artist. Um, another thing that is, um, I mean, a lot of people don't believe in it, but I think it's real this basically luck and when you find yourself because there are numerous artists that if they were in for instance in the united states yeah. they will be on like virgil abloh level and yeah. you know there's also the fact that if virgil abloh was in ghana he probably wouldn't be who is virgil you wouldn't hear about him mm -hmm. so um it's just depending on what, where you find yourself but again it's using your resources to be able to you know maximize what you're supposed to do as an artist and that's what artists as well to be able to pick up you know, different things, express the message you want to express visually and still communicate to people. Mm -hmm. And I've had I've had this um, talk with a lot of people with um, my gallery, for instance, because um, a lot of people come to me saying they need materials for, you know, to be able to paint and that, they need this, they need that. And all, sometimes I've been looking into, you know, providing these materials for them, but um, I remember speaking to somebody about this and it was basically like, to be a true artist, you have to use literally whatever you have so if it's if you literally have sand you have to use it to be able to create yourself um, whatever visually people have used blood people have used water mm -hmm. to create um, art pieces and communicate their message so again use any resource to again boost the value of your work up and i'll say the last thing is branding because um, i remember i i spoke to one of the artists i look up to it's called west good wall um, i looked um I spoke to him and he was basically like, you know, at the end of the day, you have to realize that you're dealing with art. Although it's very subjective, but anybody can tell when art is fake. And what I mean by that is that you can look at, at an artwork, you can look at artwork A, A you don't feel anything, you be like, oh, so you can look at two artworks, for instance, where there's a woman sitting down. Artwork A doesn't show you anything, you, you don't get anything, you just say, oh, a woman is sitting down. And artwork B, you look at it and she speaks to you saying, you know, this is how I feel. I'm, I'm really angry about my situation. Or you feel very sad about, you know, why she's sitting there or something. Mm -hmm. And basically behind every artwork, there's literally a spirit behind every artwork. And to be able to portray that spirit, first of all, I always say this, that um, to have the ability to um, portray your spirit through an artwork visually, for other people to relate or to speak to other people's spirits is... Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's something you shouldn't take for granted. Mm -hmm. So if you are, you know, pursuing art or the arts, um, pursuing a career in the arts field, you have to remember this and remember that you have the ability to, you know, portray your spirit. So don't take it for granted and 
try and portray trends for people to buy it. Yeah. You, you actually have this power. Not a lot of people have this the power. So I'm sure I'm sure you've been to um, art galleries where you've seen works and you've just been like, oh, okay, and you've probably seen a work and you're like, wait, what is this? Why am I? And you even get to a point you are probably asking yourself, why am I looking at this? Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not because. You know the artist used red in this place, so you're interested in the red. No, it's because yeah, something is communicating to you. The artist com- is communicating to you, and once artists are true to themselves, to be able to put put out their spirit. So Honestly, I'm I've not seen my, uh, many artists that have you know put out their true spirit, and I feel that an art career never. I, I can't even think of any. Literally, if you follow the money, I'm telling you, it's not good. So just be authentic, put put your true self out there, be humble, develop your skills, and remember why you are doing this. And again, you don't even need to put value on your work. People respect your work. Honestly, they will come to you. you know? Right. So you're saying there is so much more beyond um, what we can see in art. And you refer to that right. as the spirit of the the artist or the artisan yeah how so, does um, how does someone develop a skill or um yeah the skill set to to portray this as you're saying you find it lacking within your reach i mean there there are not many um art um arts that you look at and can feel or have this sense of spirit how does someone um, yeah, equip themselves to actually to be able to do this because, as far as I know, every artist, every true artist, is trying to do that. However, mm-hmm. it's dependent on um, literally how you feel or for what purpose you're actually doing the art. And if you do it in the right way, everyone will look at the painting, experience the same thing. However, you know, sometimes most people will not even recognize what is um, what you're trying to portray. Um, portray just maybe one person and that one person that's where the luck comes in one person sees it and actually perfectly understands what's going on here or is intrigued by what's seen but so is there actually a way to influence um your yeah your skill set in portraying that spirit of an art that you're talking about into um someone's yeah artwork yeah um so I believe that everybody has the ability to do that. And for instance, um, I may be wrong, but see that you guys have a radio show. It's your way of doing it. You um, maybe you maybe you could um, portray your spirit visually. Maybe you could do it musically. But you are in a radio, you know, studio for a reason. Right. And again, you are there at this you are there at this point in time because you are literally the best person to do that. And I'm sure you you know you've taken time to become um, as good as you are right now, or to um, you know put your all into what you're doing right now, and it's good. Well, it's going good. It's going great. And for an artist, it's just basically doing that in their visual form. So everybody has the ability to express. Everybody has emotion. Mm-hmm. So as long as you can you know say that okay, instead of being ang- when I'm angry, instead of shouting, I'm going to you know, get a canvas okay. and throw a paint on it. As simple as that, you have you you have the ability to you know portray your anger through throwing paint on a canvas. Now that is a different form of art. That is abstract art, and you know that relates to different people. So um, again, and um, you said something, but I just like to say about the um, right way of doing things. There's no right way of doing something. Okay. That's why um, art is as subjective as it is because you could literally paint and draw a square and five out of ten people would think it's a triangle. Honestly, that and that, that is the beauty of art because mm-hmm. people interpret things differently yes. and people get different messages out of different things. So I could... Um, I mean, I've, I've done a number of works where I, I just, in curiosity, ask people what do you actually think of this work? What did you get from this work? Yeah. And I ask, I ask about three people and they are like, wait, the answers that I've been given is like, I did not think of this when I was doing this. So like, where are you getting this from? And it's like, honestly, the reason why you're even telling me 
or the meaning that you're telling me lies behind the artwork seems more interesting than you know what I actually did the artwork. So, wow. <laughs> so I mean, as long as you are able to give me a meaning, I yeah. say, okay, it actually it makes you feel this way. Okay. I mean that that is the point of it, and you are only going to achieve that level of expression if you paint from the heart. I've done works where I literally just painted to the trend. I didn't like it. People didn't like it. So it's like, why did I do that? A waste of canvas, actually. So it's like, okay. And I've done works here. And funny enough, my most successful works are the works that have no relation to trend or like, it's like, I'm just doing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, people are like, oh, wow. This stands out. Wow. I like this. No, this means so much. And it's like, okay. So it's just, it's just like, yeah. Put yourself in a position where you're just painting from your heart. You know, even if you, you think it's, it doesn't make sense. That's why I said do not approach your craft from the market point of view because you're always going to do what the people want. And when you do what the people want, you're going to find out that they don't want it because, again, it, because it's so subjective, they could come back and tell you, that, oh, I don't feel anything. And you are just left there. You've wasted time, mm-hmm. like money, resources. So yeah. just do it from the heart. Even if no one patronizes it, yeah. you, know, you could probably hang it in your room and look at it every day. That I have, I have most of my paintings are with me. Sometimes I'm just going to stare at it because it's like, wow. Yeah. Like, not because it's good or anything, but a painting could take me to a time. Like most of the paintings I did um, during the pandemic, because I'm doing it um, based on how I feel, it takes me back to the time of the pandemic just to yeah. remind me of everything that was going on. And to another person, it will remind them of something else. So it's just, again, painting from the heart yeah. will take you far. Yeah. Yeah. I think that counts. Um, I know. I know you. You are speaking as a artisan, if I can call you that. <laughs> but I think it cre- it counts for everybody in creative. I think what you just yeah. said. Um, musicians should understand this or should grasp this. Um, mm-hmm. wh- what any person in arts, the arts, should mm-hmm. should be able to uh, tap into what you what you just said. Um, you know, don't let the trend actually decide for your creative yeah. uh, thing. Um, I it like could that. inspire you, but not you know decide what you are going to do or yeah. you know completely turn around what your ideas. Yeah, I like that. Uh, so what's next for Kwesi Adom? Uh, almost almost wrapping up our uh, conversation with uh, with the one who has made it clear what art is and the relevance of it for uh, for Africans as a whole. What what's next for you? Um. So right now, um, again, as I said, I'm planning to go back into. Um, creating more right. um, also focus focusing on my um, career in finance as well and just progressing through the ranks but um, art wise it is mostly creating creating on a bigger scale mm-hmm. um, creating from um, in the way that is not necessarily traditional so you know moving more away from painting to put things together and you know researching more as to how I can put the different things together to be able to uh, keep on expressing myself um in terms of my art gallery again more action is coming in terms of um more discussions with artists more education more provision of like resources or grants or something and just basically expanding the base of how we could support artists yeah and yeah right right and um what do you think before we round up um, what's your hope for, for Ghana in terms of art? Because one, one, one of the things is that, you know, here, because we're based in Amsterdam, here in Europe, there's funding for art. Um, they take it quite serious in the sense that they, they feel that, you know, once they promote um, the arts that come from the soil, you know, it, it helps the branding of the, of the nation, basically, among mm-hmm. one of the things. Yeah. And um, then also we have discussed many topics where uh, of looted arts, you know, um, African creations that stand in the museum here, like they cost, or I think they do cost mm-hmm. over 500,000 euros, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, wondering why isn't the arts <laughs> that is on African soil like this? Um, with that said, um, what are your hopes for um, the, the arts in uh, coming from Ghana? Okay, um, first of all, I'll look at it from the point of view of the market. So as compared to the West, so 
let's say America, Europe, and you know the UK. Yeah. Um, more people are ready to patronize arts because you know they want to be involved in the artist. Mm-hmm. Um, they could simply like the work, or they are collectors, so um, they have a motive to keep patronizing the work for an artist career to be built. Yeah. Like on a solid ground, and you have. Um, you also have the artists that is the more commercial artists that have done whatever they want to do, express themselves like wholeheartedly. They found their audience, and their audience keeps on coming to them. Mm-hmm. And in Ghana, first of all, the stereotype is that okay, you're not going to make money in art anyway. So people <laughs> are not seriously venturing into art. It's only recently that you know more artists are coming up. And more art ventures are coming up, which is, is a really good thing. Yeah. Um, for example, we have the No Door re- uh, Residency as well, which, which has just, just come up. Right. Um, you know, connecting different artists to different, you know, collectors and galleries and putting artists on the spot to be able to create. You have more artists that are actually, you know, getting the confidence to stand out and say, you know what, art is not, you know, a traditional career in Canada, but I'm going to, you know, Mm-hmm. create a path for myself to actually let it stand out so mm-hmm. um, in terms of hope I believe um, that there's seriously a future for um, art in Ghana and it's really starting to pick up um, most the most thing I'll be concerned about will be maybe the direction in which it could head to because at the end of the day most of the things that we start especially for art because I believe like the normal African artist um, finds success in basically creating a work being discovered and you know going to europe to exhibit and i don't know what what happens from there mm-hmm. so you have most art, most artists that start as start out in ghana get a little big and then you know the white man comes and it's like okay we are taking your work to europe and that that is great and i, I mean if that happened to me you'll yeah. find me in europe also exhibiting yeah. but it's like okay what happens after that what value do, do they bring to us? Because it seems to be a repetition of history of, okay, they take the work from here. We we happily also go there to exhibit the work and what happens, maybe it stays there, never comes back home mm-hmm. and, okay, it becomes a story of looting, but it's like, mm-hmm. okay, they, we we all partook in it and we all took it there. Well, apart from the works that were blatantly, you know, stolen. And um, it's a continuous cycle of, okay, we start out, start out as an artist, we wait for, you know, the international level to recognize us and we're done and then there's no contribution back into the Ghanaian art society yeah so you have every artist really starting from the ground yeah making it and then you know you probably never hear of them or it's, it's almost as if they just go silent sure. so it's like what's actually happening to the artists that actually you know go to america europe to exhibit and it's like yeah. well it's, there's only up to today there's only one artist in africa and i don't know if you've heard of him and mm-hmm. He has exhibited in Europe, America. It's like right now, I think it's, it's he just had a, an exhibition in Coachella as well, like the um, area where they have Coachella, and it's like mm-hmm. he's doing bits. But he he is one artist that can confidently say you are not you are not taken out of Ghana, honestly, because he works with the local people. He works in his and where he's from, I think, and he works with the local people. He works with basically everyone to be able to form his artworks because his artworks are basically made from gallons mm-hmm. like you know the, the uh, yellow gallons and everything and he puts them together to you know make maybe a sheet yeah. or a building or something so again he's working with the people mm-hmm. but for most artists you go to europe you go to america and that's the end of it so taking me for instance if i'm to come up as an artist i'm literally starting from the bottom and i go mm-hmm. next artist starting from the bottom so there's no platform or structure to yeah basically help artists or there's no like organization to be able to you know put artists in a certain art field and of course the government's not helping us all because there are more important areas to focus on like yeah. you know food and water and like yeah you know basic um, human um, necessities sure. so from the government point of view no one is looking at the arts mm-hmm. after all the artists you know especially in ghana is a small group of people who endorse the arts, which is basically the super rich. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you don't hear about them. And it's funny because I've been I've been in scenarios where I've been in the midst of them and it's like they have their own you know, meetups and their own clubs and everything. It's a whole so scene. to be able to get into that circle yeah. and actually show your work 
is one thing and for your work to be actually good enough and liked by them to be um purchased or endorsed is another thing yeah and 90 percent of artists in africa don't have this so again that's another thing i'm, I'm working on to be able to bridge the gap mm -hmm. and not again um and also define success in our own way as um, Ghanaians because not every the art success story doesn't have to be you know being picked up in europe or being picked up in america yeah or it doesn't have to be you know having to have an exhibition where you know mm -hmm. thousands of people come and sip champagne and you know don't give you any um accolades after that yeah. and that's the end of the artist journey is i'm thinking of a way of defining a new form of success where we can literally create commercial art out of most of the um, it, artists yeah. that are coming up and also you know contribute actually contribute to their lives starts. yeah got it well thank you very much uh Kwesi, for um giving us okay. all of those perspectives yeah i think it really um uh, gives us a better idea of how the art world is now you know in um in in, in ghana uh specifically mm -hmm. and also uh what you do on such a lean scale to yeah. um, make the needed connections happen and i hope with uh, people like you that could mean um a, a turnaround in the industry uh, where a lot of people could be able to monetize it and also be able to um, I, I, I call it quite an invincible <laughs> Invincible thing that could help brand Ghana as a whole. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much um, we right. can Thank find you very much for having me on the show as well. Most yeah, welcome yeah. <laughs> For all of you out there if you are interested to follow uh, Chrissy Adom, make sure that you follow him on Instagram um there you can find him what, what's your name on instagram yeah it's just quasi underscore adam and yeah. and the, and the then, gallery gallery is adam squared underscore art right right and then you have several other businesses you are a true hustler plus you are in finance man man you definitely refuse to to be the broke artist let me just put it that <laughs> way <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, uh, Kwesi. We will be catching up and, of course, uh, staying yes, in touch with you and your ventures so that, you know, in, uh, let's say, a couple of months time, we will have you back on the show to give us uh, an update on uh, yeah, what's going be good. on in the yeah. world. Right. All right. Have a good day. Yeah, All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. All right. Well, that was a good conversation, a good lengthy conversation. Yeah. It was almost yeah. like podcast, you know, where you could just 